Alrighty guys, tis I, Chrissy Girl, and welcome to part 10 of Lego Harry Potter Years 1 to 4, and we are about to begin Year 2. So, a whole new adventure is on the horizon, and I'm quite looking forward to seeing what this year's got in store for us. Obviously it all begins at the Dursleys, those douchebag Dursleys. Vernon doing what he does best, and just yelling and screaming and telling Harry off. And we also get introduced to Dobby here, who actually looks pretty darn cute in his Lego model form. Yeah, who would have thought that a, you know, a Lego what, model of a, um, a wrinkly old house self wearing a dirty pillowcase <laughs> would actually be cute, but he is, so... We also find that Dobby's being quite cheeky. He's trying to stop Harry going back to Hogwarts. So he's taken the letters that his friends had sent him. Just to make him feel like he'd been forgotten when he actually hadn't. And of course to stir things up even more. He's chucked a cake at Mrs. Mason's face. Mr. and Mrs. Mason obviously being very important people. Um... Vernon was hoping to get a deal with them, I think. <laughs> Obviously, yeah, it looks like that ain't going to happen now. So he's taking it out on Harry. Locking him in his room day and night. Most people already know all this, but... <laughs> you wouldn't know it if you'd never you know, watched a film or read the books. And I just like that. You could just... I think that's Dudley's room. That you also got a glimpse into. So, time to make his great escape. Off we go. And of course, Vernon falling out of the Dursley's window is actually pretty funny, <laughs> even in the film. Because he deserves it, he's a douchebag. <laughs> but yeah. Now we're free and we're at the Weasley's house, a.k.a. the Burrow. In the book and the film, Ron did not rescue Harry alone. He had Fred and George with him. And of course, we also meet Ginny um, in year two, who has quite a bit of a thing for Harry. So anyway... Burrow Garden, you may find that there's these little creatures hanging around. They're gnomes. And it's kind of like a throwback to the books where, you know, denome in the garden and all that. So just pick them up, spin them, and toss them at, you know, wherever. There are five of them and it gets you something. For those who actually care about that sort of thing. Three... Oh, there's six of them. Sorry. Six gnomes, not five. <laughs> See, I'm not perfect. So, yeah, after the um, boys got into trouble, um, Molly basically turned around and said, Oh, you have to denome the garden now. And Harry was like, Oh, I'll help. She was like, Oh, you don't have to, Harry, dear. Yeah. I'm a geek. So sue me. I absolutely love the books. Um, Chamber of Secrets was not my favourite one. But it was still a pretty darn good book. And film. I will probably say out of the first... Oh, there we go. Hogwarts Crest piece. I would probably say that as far as like the first... You know, the two first two films were concerned. It'd be my favourite of the two. But all the films together, um, including the ones not directed by Christopher Columbus, um, oh, um, probably Deathly Hallows Part 2 was the only one that actually made me want to cry. <laughs> But I won't go into any more detail about that. 
So, in the garden there are these giant carrots. Um, just drive this vehicle over them and they'll pop up. Then of course you can uh, use Wingardium Leviosa to send it flying upwards like a rocket. And there's seven of them so that gets you something else. <laughs> I'm trying not to go back and pick up the studs, but it's very, very tempting. That's why I'm finding myself doing it. I do apologise. Nothing changes. You'd be pleased to know that I finished um, years five to seven. Well, anyone that is watching this, all two of you. <laughs> be pleased to know that years five to seven has been completely recorded. And I actually got better with the stud collection. It kind of started off pretty bad. I was still going mad on stud collecting in Order of the Phoenix. But by half blood prints, I sort of calmed down. I got through it in no time. I just finished it today. Finished recording it. And yeah, I'm quite happy about that. And that's the last carrot, and that gets me another crest piece. Alrighty. I think I'm done out in the garden. I'm bored. <laughs> Here we go. So upon arriving in the house, Ginny's just laughing at you because, you know, you had to do denoming. Oh, I don't know. She's She's got the giggles because Harry's in the house. But if I remember anything from the book and the film, she just sort of went all quiet and red every time she saw him. But hey-ho. What better way to portray that she's got a crush on Harry than to have her giggling like a schoolgirl? <laughs> Just doing this for the hell of it. Even if housework is insanely boring. <laughs> Gotta be done. Gets me some studs. Ah. So, uh, I suppose there's probably one other thing that I should talk about. Being that I am playing a Harry Potter game. Even if it is a Lego Harry Potter game, it's still a Harry Potter game in my book. So obviously, I should probably mention first that Ginny's hiding and you have to find her. She hides somewhere different every time, I think. Last time I played this, before this time, she was in the orange sofa. Now in this game, she's actually over here. You cannot leave the burrow without Ginny, so you have to find her. And then, of course, you can go on a great journey... To obviously, where else? Nocturne Alley. Um, and yeah, um, as I was saying, one thing I probably should discuss, being that this is a Harry Potter game, probably, you know, people may be curious what I think of the rival franchise, Twilight. And some other people are probably groaning, thinking, why bring that up in a Harry Potter playthrough? But, you know, there's probably bound to be some people that's curious, all two of you. Because <laughs> I've practically got the subscribers at the moment. But, you know, I'll get there. I'll get there. I'll make my mark. Even if I'm just... I'm really crap. <laughs> so, um... Twilight, what do I think of it? I don't hate it. I don't particularly see the fascination with it either, to be honest with you. I would make no secret of the fact that I greatly prefer Harry Potter. I don't know. Some evil creature. Who could it possibly be? Oh, it's just you, Hagrid. <laughs> My hand has dropped off. So yeah, Twilight's, Twilight's just nothing special to me. It's not like the worst thing in the world, but... It doesn't hold my interest. I'm not going to rant on about how, oh my god, vampires shouldn't sparkle or anything like that. Because at the end of the day, I respect if people like it, as long as they respect that I don't like it that much. I have watched all the films. Oh, careful, that drunk's evil. <laughs> I have watched all the films just to sort of like, because I have read the books, just to see what it was like. Each and every time I found myself disappointed, thinking, when's the action going to start? Clearly not that kind of book. It's more of a romance then it is um, action. So if you're expecting in many action-y parts, Twilight's not going to be for you. It's just one of those 
really overrated books that you know really overrated book and film series I actually heard quite a few people moaned about there was a the fact that there was a sort of semi fight scene at the end of Breaking Dawn Part One. I thought it was a great idea, <laughs> to be honest with you. Otherwise, it would have just been really boring, like the book was. But yeah, that's my thoughts on Twilight. I don't hate it, but at the same time, I'm not a fan. I am definitely Harry Potter's the better series to me. Always has been. Always will be. Um, and I, like I say, I don't hate people for their opinions, as long as they don't hate on me for mine. At the end of the day, if, if someone's a Twilight fan, go ahead, enjoy it. But I'll always be a Harry Potter fan, and as long as people respect that, I'm okay with them. But anyway, moving on back to Harry Potter. We are in um, Nocturne Alley, Borgin and Burks to be precise. Um... You can actually come back in this store as part of the uh, Diagon Alley hub world thingy. Um, but I don't really see any need to. I don't actually think I ever did in this playthrough actually. I never showed it off or anything. But you can sort of access it. I didn't realise that until a while later but you can sort of access it from Diagon Alley. I will be showing Diagon Alley off later on, but I don't think I showed Nocturne Alley off. It essentially looks the same as it is here, so I wouldn't worry too much about it, to be honest with you. Um, yeah, so obviously we, we get out of Diagon Alley, and then we should be okay. We should be set to go. Um, Hagrid, of course, good for strength. Primarily. <laughs> ah. Head up here and you'll probably notice there's a crest. You cannot get to it without a dark magic character. It looks like you probably can. By just climbing up the stairs and jumping off it. But I've never managed it. I don't think it is possible to manage it. If anyone proves that, uh, can prove otherwise, go right ahead. But I truly don't believe you can manage to get up there. Oh my god, giant spider. Hate spiders. <laughs> yeah. That's where it is. If you've got a dark magic character, come back later on when you get one and go for it. And that's where you can get the character icon for Harry Sweater. Don't ask. I was trying to Leviosa that lamp and Harry wound up grabbing onto the lever. Should have known he wasn't strong enough to pull it. So now we're back in Diagon Alley. Thank goodness for that. And we're about to be introduced to another irritating character. Gilderoy Lockhart. That show off. <laughs> He's basically an up his ass character. And that there is Draco's father. Who's just as much a douchebag as his son is. And yeah, I <laughs> love how Ginny just shrugs it off. She don't care. <laughs> but I don't like the look on Malfoy's face. What has he done? But yeah, that's the first level of year two. Um, really straightforward, really short, if you take out the fact that I was constantly going after studs. Um, and yeah, um getting ready to go back to Hogwarts. I'm quite looking forward to it. Um, with that being said, I'll see you guys in the next part. Bye-bye.